Right. Hi, my name is Ed Paul. I'm a political activist and I've been talking to people from new projects on the left to find out what they're about. Today I'm talking to Alex May from the newly formed Breakthrough Party. Hi Alex, thanks for, for thanks for doing this. No, thanks very much for having me Ed. Right, it's good, yeah, good to be on. So, um, so, so what is Breakthrough? Yeah, so Breakthrough is a democratic socialist party that is trying to be like a real alternative to the failed status quo. Um, I think for far too long we've had really a, a pretty much a two-party system um, that isn't representative of a wider society. Um, so I think there is time for something, something new, um, like a real transformative change, um, which just simply doesn't exist in the mainstream political arena. Um, and we like to think we would be that, like, it, it, it's, it's been a real, it's been like, and I think like many people felt like this for like years, but especially after the 2019 general election, that we're really lacking choice. Um, like the, the conversation has been pushed further right by the conservatives and by the media. Um, and they're focusing on, you know, culture, you know, these sort of culture wars, this sort of, um, plastic patriotism and what we really need to be focusing on is like looking to the younger generations because we're basically you know we're set to inherit a world in crisis um, and it's about how can we form you know a wider movement with like trade unions and like anti-racist organizations social movements and like just build a powerful force for change okay great um what would you say breakthroughs aims are specifically yeah, I, I think what's really important here is, you know, there's there's two there's two sides to this really. Like, first of all, I think like it's really important that there's an emergence of de democratic socialist parties, and we've seen quite a few pop up, which has been great. And I think what our aim needs to be is putting pressure on Labour from the left. I think I touched on this in the intro before, but like you know. We've seen Labour have sort of been moved further to the right under Starmer. Um, we've seen like, you know, remember the 10 pledges at the start of his leadership and how they've sort of one by one, they've disappeared. Um, and I think what the job needs to be a breakthrough of like Tusk, um, Northern Independence Party, whoever else right now has to be pushing the conversation further left. Um, there needs to be really strong representation as well, because I don't think Labour will do it themselves. I think we've, see, we've seen this over this last year, that they're quite happy to continue down this path back to neoliberalism um, and sort of like providing 20th century solutions to 21st century problems. Like it's just not gonna work. Um, like, you know, we've seen it even in the poll yesterday, I think it was in the Times, um, you know, I think, was it something like they're 15 points down now? Maybe 13 points, but okay. it was definitely double digit. Uh, 14. It's, it's 14 so they're double digits down um and there needs to be a radical alternative and like we need to you know whether that's breakthrough and whether that's any other party that's existing on the left we need to be that obviously we want electoral success eventually like that you know that's certainly part of what we want to do but i think first and foremost it needs to be about moving the conversation further to the left and we need to put that pressure on labor okay would you, would you describe breakthrough as a socialist party Yes, I would, yeah. Um, I think, especially for, during these first few months, like we've seen as well, I think that it's important to say this as well, because I think um, when, we, when we look at what's happened over the last five years and the word socialist or socialism and how it's been totally torn apart by mainstream press um, and just like the, the political establishment. Um, so there's always a fear of branding yourself as a socialist or a socialist movement. Um, and what as well we wanted to, you know, it's difficult with as well is that obviously we want to appeal to younger voters. And I think these, these kind of labels can be a bit of a barrier um, because I don't think these, you know, this, their, this, their political identity isn't sort of like shaped, it can't be shaped by these labels. It needs to be shaped by what they encounter in life. And we, we're really like strong advocates for like socialist solutions um and present ourselves but also we want to present ourselves as a party that can be sort of, sort of open to everyone um so it's a fine balance but yes we are socialists we are a democratic socialist party okay um 
you, you mentioned democratic. Who's in charge of Breakthrough? Absolutely, yeah. So at the moment, we've got you know I'm the founder. Um, we've got to, we've had to put like a temporary team in place to help sort of get the party moving and get like um, you know get it functioning. Um, but what the plan is and like where we really want to show, as you say, like we really want to be democrat, like fully democratic. So we want our members to lead the party ultimately. We don't want to be a top-down organization. We want to be bottom-up. We want to be grassroots. Um, so like we're putting the processes in place to allow that to happen. Um, I think as well during the pandemic as well, there's been a real need to obviously to pr uh, create processes that are digital as well. And, you know, we've, we've already had people that, are, you know, volunteers that are involved you know, and anyone that's sort of signed up who's been getting involved in policy development and having a real say on what we're doing. Um, and we want that to be, you know, as we grow and evolve, you know, we want them to be front and centre. We don't want there to be um, this, this small amount, like this massive amount of power in the hands of only a few. It needs to be throughout the whole party. Um, and we're putting we're putting everything in place to ensure that's possible. Like that's going to happen. Okay. So um, like I've tried to set up a, a, a network of activists in the past. I know it's pretty. You kind of hit a thing where you want to try to set up a decision making body, and you have to decide how you're going to set up a decision making body. It's quite a, a bit of a catch twenty two. It's quite tricky. Um, one of the things you touched on, you said we. Who's who's involved so far? What's what's it, you know what sort of. Uh, what are the give, give us a picture of how these discussions are had yeah so we've got we've got a real mix of people that have got involved like you know we've got like from people that have spent decades in the Labour Party and you know been involved you know in their like very involved in their own CLPs and and the like and like you know have a really proper traditional socialist background but we've also got people that have come into the party who completely like never been part of a political party before have been apathetic to politics or even haven't ever voted before. And what's been really exciting is that I think they've seen this movement, they've seen breakthrough come about and they've gone, oh my God, this could actually be something that speaks, it's something that speaks to them. Um, so like, that's been great. So we've got like a real mix of people. Um, we have, you know, we have a temporary steering group in place with a mixture of these people who can help us make um, decisions in the short term. But we're planning later this year to have a national committee that's elected by our members in place later this year just to ensure as well like we don't as i said before we don't want power to be in the hands of a few like i am the founder of course but like and you know currently like interim leader but like we've got a leadership election happening later this year so if people aren't happy with what <laughs> with how i've been you know how i've been doing these last few months i'm happy to be voted out and get someone else in like you know i'm my political background is very you know I was a Labour Party member for a couple of years, um, but I was never on frontline politics. So if someone comes in who can, you know, who can do that, then, you know, do, do the job better than great. But like, I, it's very much all about giving everyone a say on how we operate and how we move forward. You, you say be happy to be, be voted out. I mean, is happy the right word? Maybe, maybe happy is the, <laughs> the wrong word. But I'd be, I'd be absolutely comfortable and fine with the idea that if like, because like ultimately, like my, my goal with this movement, with this party has always been to get it up and like moving up and running, yeah. get it in a place where like it's starting to really grow and evolve and see some like progress. And like it has done, like it, you know, I think we're already seeing a lot of progress and how it's developing. Like, of course, like I, I enjoy bringing everyone together. That's kind of like how I see my role within the party. But I'm also not in, I'm not got an ego. I'm not in a position where like, um i'm thinking about like it's all about me it really isn't yeah. at all um and i'm happy for you know we've already got some fantastic people involved like absolutely fantastic i've been actually really blown away by like the the passion the energy the expertise that we already have within the party and i imagine over the next few weeks and months we're only gonna get more and more people that will bring that to the table so like you know it's just being like for me it's being realistic and being aware that like we are gonna you know we are gonna have a you know elections later this year and like i'm not i'm not tied to the fact that i need to be the person who's leading it like i, I want to be involved in it i want to be a part of it you know this is you know something that you know a few months ago was just an idea and now it's you know a fully functioning party that's now you know it can stand in elections we've got you know hundreds of people involved already who are you know helping us start like really get the ball, ball rolling so 
you know, I'm proud of that. And if that was, you know, if I've been part of that, you know, been the front and center of that journey so far and like, you know, the next phase is someone else and so be it, but I'm, 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 you know, I'm fine with that. Okay, good. I didn't mean to like put you on the spot too much. Oh no, not at all. Not at all. Like I think it's, yeah, I think happy was probably the wrong word, but like, you, you know what I mean? Like I'm, I'm very comfortable with the idea that by the end of this year, I may not be the leader and I would be okay with that. And one thing I had when I was trying to set up, I was trying to set up a network of uh, socialists within the Labour Party and I had certain goals in mind. So one of the things I wanted to do was organise for candidate selections, um, organ help people organise for, for running for their local executive committees and just generally provide support and know-how and so on for those sorts of things. But in setting up that network, I was aware that other people involved had, had other priorities and they wanted to do yeah. other things. Um, you were going, going a bit off track here, but just something while you were talking, something occurred to me. One of the things that worried me is as it, it never got off the ground really, but as it got off the ground, it might be steered away from what I thought the, my priorities were to, to things that I, I thought were maybe covered by other organisations already, like Momentum or whatever. But are you, are you worried that... Um, once it's kind of uh, once you birth this into the world, it's it's um, going to become something you're not so keen on. I, I'm from from everyone that's involved so far, and like how I see it progressing, I don't I don't have any concerns or um, worries about that happening. Um, I think there's like a clear message and clear principles that we hold, and I would never envisage us steering away from that um yeah like I'm, I'm really confident actually of that like i think i think that you know ultimately as a party we're a democratic socialist party we're we're existing in this space to sort of be the voice of people that have become voiceless really um after 2019 as I say younger people vulnerable people and minority communities as well and we want to be that voice and we want to stand up for people and i don't think that will i don't think that will change okay uh, you mentioned the, uh, the kind of core principles uh, just for people watching who might not have been on the website yet, might not have had a look. Do you want to just give us a kind of rundown of what the, the there's kind of four areas on your website that you highlight, isn't there? Yeah, absolutely. Like th these are sort of four issues that we think really res, you know, are really like important to raise. And I think when we talk about, again, generation left and like, or just like younger, you know, issues that are facing younger people, like they're, they're four issues, as you say. So we've got like transform the world of work end the housing crisis, resist the police state and fight for climate justice. I think when, when you look at those four areas, when you look at, you know, when we talk again about this generational inequality that exists as well, we've got, you know, pretty much anyone you could argue under 40 has probably experienced, you know, a much tougher start, I guess, in terms of you know, like my, my parents' generation, for example, like, you know, they had the opportunity to, you know, they could afford to buy their house, you know, like they could afford to be home, you know, it could be homeowners, they'd be in work, which is secure and well paid. Um, you know, we weren't even, I think even in like the 80s and 90s, like the climate crisis was barely talked about, you know, um, and these are issues that we're facing as a generation coming through. We've, you know, the financial crash and then the decade of austerity, this really stripped away um, any sort of possibility of this generation having a better time than our parents. And I think there's already been a lot of studies to suggest that millennials and also Gen Z um, now growing up are gonna have, you know, the quality of life and like our material needs aren't gonna be met as well as our parents, which is just shocking. Um, when you look at work, you look at like zero hours contracts to gig economy work, even the minimum wage, which, you know, it just isn't enough to allow people to thrive in our society. So that's something like, you know, we're immediately looking at in terms of housing, you know, again, as I touched on before, like it's not afford, you know, housing isn't affordable. And like the, the, the fact that so many of us are renting and paying off our landlord's mortgage is just ridiculous um you know it's just it's just baffling to me and you know we've seen with the tories they've inflated the housing bu housing bubble they've made how housing much more expensive and a lot more younger people aren't able to get on the housing ladder so we need to do something about that 
re resist the police state is all about the right to protest. Like we've seen the kill the bill protests. We've seen, you know, it's just it's just shocking that we've allowed this to happen. Like I think if we saw this happening, and we have seen it happening in places like Hungary, in Poland, and um, you know, in China, wherever else, where the right to protest is stifled. And, you know, you see the media's absolutely all over it, shocked, appalled by, you know, what's been going on. And then the Tories here have been given a free pass. I've like, mm -hmm. been given a free pass on it. Um, you know, we should have the fundamental right to protest and stand up for minority communities that are being persecuted by, by this government. Um, and then finally, as well, when I talk about climate justice, like that's obviously incredibly important as well. Like we need to look at how, like global cooperation on climate justice um, and addressing the climate change issue. Um, I think we've seen again. Like I saw our Nike going back to the Tories and what they're doing, but like the 2050 target is too late. <laughs> That's just not like just just facts. It's too late, um, and we need to look at like how can we bring that down to something like 2030, maybe even 2035 latest. Um, and even what they do have in place already is nowhere near ambitious enough in terms of like how they're actually going to achieve that. Um, we've got the, you know, the, the conference later this year in Glasgow and we really are in danger. Of, you know, I just think it could be Paris all over again, or it could be like Copenhagen or whatever other climate conferences where we have, where we have a lot of people talking about how great it is that we're starting to do things, but nothing's really changing. And I think this is what we're trying to sort of say as a party is that, there needs to be transformative radical change. It can't be tinkering with the status quo anymore. It needs to be actually really addressing these issues. And again, as I said, like providing 21st century solutions to, to these problems rather than harping back to the 80s and the 90s and like the sort of like the neoliberalism that engulfed our country. Yeah. Okay. Um, you kind of touched on this a little bit already, but do you see... Um, in the short term, kind of medium term, do you see the role of, of Breakthrough as, as lobbying for policy change in government or are you intending to stand candidates? Are you standing candidates in May? Um, what's, what, how do you see it? Yeah, so, yeah, absolutely. Like, as I said, as you, as you rightly touched on, it's like that we are looking to, you know, we are really ultimately trying to move the conversation further left and putting pressure on mainstream parties to go more left. Like, that is definitely front and centre of what we need to do. But also, yeah, we are absolutely intending to stand candidates. We haven't, it's come a bit too soon for us, the local elections. Like we'd have loved to stand some candidates, but we know it's really important to make sure our movement is in the right place to do that. That we don't want to just stand candidates, um, get a few votes and not make any real difference. Like we want to make sure that any any sort of election we do stand in, we're confident and got the the, the structure in place, the finances in place to ensure that we can actually breakthrough you know um and you know like we're, we're open to future by-elections that could come up i think we've got to be um and we're trying to make sure we're ready for that um and also the local elections next year so like this these next few months are very much about building but we definitely do want to stand candidates we're really keen on that um we're just we're just not quite there yet but you know, watch this space. Like, you know, we're, we're chatting to independent councillors at the moment about coming under the Breakthrough Party banner. Um, and that's something we're working on in the background. Probably see more movement on that after the local elections because obviously a lot of people are very, very busy in the run to that at the moment. But yeah, like confident that like, you know, over these next few months, we'll have a few people um, under the Breakthrough Party banner, which is really exciting, like, you know, for something so new. Great. Um, obviously there's, as I've kind of one of the things I've touched on in my previous videos is there's a lot of kind of new parties have sprung up over the year, over the last year or so, a lot of new organisations. There's things, also Jeremy Corbyn's launched a thing. There's different parties, Chris Williamson's thing, George Galloway's thing, the Northern Independence Party. There's all sorts of stuff going on. How do you approach uh, the issue? How do you approach working with others on the left? Yeah, so like... I don't know if I, I think I might have touched on this before we actually chat, but about that there's been like this has been an issue for the left for decades, this sort of tribalism um, and and sometimes egos as well um, and a real lack of cooperation between left wing factions. Um, and like what we need to do, like this is a time where obviously a lot of parties are going to are going to start popping up because there's a real desire for it. There's a real vacuum that's been left um, after Corbyn. After, after the sort of Corbyn era finished. Um, 
So I, that that's going to be the case probably for the next sort of few months, next year or two, where we're sort of figuring out who's, you know, who's in a place to be successful and like how can we all work together. But we're, we're already having conversations with other parties like, like Resist, like Northern Independence Party, like Harmony Party, whoever else. Like we're already having those conversations because we think it's really important. Like we believe that we need to cooperate and be more of a collective rather than just sort of working in like these sort of silos of just like doing do sort of focus on what that we're doing and not what other people are doing um you know we've even sort of labor in like the last election like there's don't get me wrong like i'm i'm not a big fan of the greens or lib dems either but like the sort of there is like there was a call for that sort of progressive alliance to exist there and labor didn't take people up on that and i think what we need to do is the like when I say progressive, I'm, I mean now like a real progressive alliance existing between you know between Northern Independence Party, between Breakthrough Party, Resist. Like obviously we're all going to have bro like broadly like we're all we all have um, similar ideology. There will of course be differences, but there has to be that willingness to work together um, and not split the vote in certain seats or whatever else. So I think whether that's an alliance, a coalition, electoral pact, something more informal or parties eventually merging. Like we, we just don't know what that, what form that will take, but for, from our position, like we're really keen to work with other parties um, and, and we're absolutely open to doing that. I just hope everyone, and I, and I think everyone will be like, you know, from the conversations we've already had with, with other parties, I think everyone is open to that, which is really positive to see. Okay. Um Obviously, the, the on the website you outlined outlined four issues, but I want to get and and you're you're the kind of in temporary leader while everything's being sorted out. So, in, from a kind of temporary um, point of view, um, yeah. with that as a, a caveat, I just want to know your position on a few different kind of areas. So, what's your position on public ownership? Public ownership, yeah, absolutely. Like, so we 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 we, we back public ownership of you know of utilities of um public transport um you know stopping the nhs being privatized further and bringing that back further into public ownership as well as you know bringing um um social care as well back into public ownership as well um like we're, we're big supporters of that like we've, we've seen over the years like what privatizing um public um utilities has done and like well pub, you know um what, what what were publicly run services um and we we want to bring them back in um you know no one should be profiting off the back of this like we've seen like as well i think i think as well like what's been really frustrating to see is you know we've seen through this the, the pandemic's been a prime example of it like showing how how it's failing like the, this system of privatizing um certain sections of our society just doesn't work like we've seen it with the nhs um We've seen it with, you know, even going into like the railways, like how expensive it is to get a train ticket and like yeah. the actual infrastructure that's in place is appalling. Like, you know, it's it's just disgraceful, really. Like, I think that there's a lot of, like, we're really supportive of like, we own it as well. And like their campaign to, you know, bring bring this stuff back into public ownership. And we fully support that as a party. Great. Um, this is obviously quite a divisive uh issue on the left which quite a lot of people probably think is is like to be closed now but a lot of people i know are still campaigning on this um so yeah. what's, what's your position on the eu so i'll be i'll totally honest with you I, I voted remain um but i was a euro skeptic like there there are definitely problems with the eu like there's i don't think anyone can really deny that um but i think there needs to be an acceptance this and like an acceptance that this debate is over for now um like as a party, we're open long term to these ideas in the future, but it's just not a political priority for us. Um, like we've seen the issues that the UK is facing right now. And, you know, I think we need to have an open mind on it in the future. But there's, in our opinion, as party, there's like, and it's not something that needs to be addressed right now. There are bigger issues in play. Okay. Um, what about trans rights? Yeah, absolutely. Like, so trans rights, like, you know, it says it gets said a lot, but trans rights are human rights. Um, I think like in the eighties, like being on the side of like gay rights activism or feminism, like people were sort of like tarred with the brush of being like loony left, but like these things are now widely expected, like accepted, embraced. Um, 
and at the time, you know, there's always a time when stuff like this is treated as radical, but you know, trans people have their dignity as human beings. Like, I think, you know, it's great that there are more people who are more comfortable, like people being comfortable and being open with their identity. Um, and I think like we, we fully support the trans community, 100%. Great. Um, just to warn you, my, my other dog has just come in the room, so there might be some, <laughs> some disruption. <laughs> it's fine. There he is. Oh, I can't wait to have a dog. I've literally just bought um just just bought my first house with my girlfriend, and like that will definitely be a future a future thing. I think <laughs> yeah, it's been um it's been quite tough. Um, training, I imagine training and sleep and stuff. Sleep was difficult for, for particularly for the first one because we wanted to get two. Um, slightly off topic again, but we wanted to get two. Um, and we were told you should stagger them and we didn't stagger them probably as much as you're supposed to but um kind of the second one learns off the first one so it wasn't too bad but getting the first one sleep and things like that were, were a problem for a few months it's like having a baby is nuts but anyway, yeah i can't um, can imagine <laughs> now he's he dates him but actually he did wake me up last night but anyway anyway so um so former le- what's what's your position what's your take on the whole um labor anti-semitism and people kicked out for alleged anti-Semitism and, and what would be um, your approach to that? Yeah, absolutely. So like, I think it's just good to get this out, like get this on the table. Like, obviously we're an anti-racist party and like we're opposed to anti-Semitism in all its forms. Um, anti-Semitism as well is not only like an issue on the left, I think it's also an issue on the right. And it's a problem that exists very clearly and we can't deny that. Um, but I think what we also have to recognise, there are people who aren't anti-Semites who are being tarred with this brush. And, you know, whether that's because they're pro-Palestine or critical of how aspects of anti-Semitism have been covered in the press. Um, and coverage of it at times has been disproportionate. Um, there's like Labour members who, who are good people who have been at the wrong end of this sort of factional dispute from within Labour and been expelled for that reason. Um, so... Obviously, like we don't welcome people who are hostile to any racial group, but there has to be a balance here. Like I think, I think there's people in the Labour Party that have been wrongly um, tarred with that brush. Um, but like to deny its existence is again really counterproductive, and you know, ultimately, like anti-Semitism is an issue and it needs to be dealt with. Um, I was going to put you on the spot and ask if you'd let various famous people join Breakthrough, but I'm not going to do that because that's... <laughs> We've had, um, yeah, like, when I say famous, because that, that's the thing, isn't it? I think with new left left parties, I guess, it's more like, you know, on Twitter, like, you know, Twitter's always a good barometer, and we've had, like, a lot of sort of, like, prominent left-wing figures follow us on Twitter. Whether, like, how involved they are at the moment, some are getting more involved and some are sort of, about to be getting more involved but like so i can't really say anything as such on that right now but like we are definitely getting more interest and more um people who are like quite big on the left who are starting to follow us and want to get involved which is really exciting i just meant in terms of um people who are um uh, i don't want to name any names but people who are, who have a reputation who have been say expelled from the labor party oh sorry sorry no 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 sorry i didn't realize you meant that um not anyone I know of, not anyone that I know of that's been, you know, high profile expelled or anything like that. Like, no, there's no one that I know who, who has been. Is that, that might be a bridge you have to cross. <laughs> yes, yeah, no, it's something, it's something we're definitely aware of. But like, from, from what I've seen so far, no, there's no one that I'm, I, who's been like getting involved, who I've been um, concerned about in terms of, yeah, the anti-Semitism side of things. Um, so what's, what's your position? This is something that was not quite as fashionable now as it was maybe a year or two ago, but something that I think is, is worth uh, covering. What's your position on, on sort of modern monetary theory? And Yeah, sort of um, yeah, it's, yeah, modern monetary theory, we're, we're definitely, it's something we're really interested in. Like the policy team are already sort of like looking into this more and there's a lot more people within the party know a lot more about it than I do. Um, so I'm not going to like be around the bush and try and sort of say to you like, and try and sort of bum, bungle my way through it. But it's something that we're looking to as a party, and I recognise there's like a lot of complexity around it. But it's something we're looking at as a party to sort of um, promote and adopt. Um, I think it's a it's a good way of looking at things. So yeah, it's something we're looking at. Great. Um, and what, what, what do you feel about class and a kind of a class analysis, working class, middle class? What's... 
Yeah, I think the class narrative has somewhat shifted. Um, when we talk about generational inequality again as well, I think we need to look at how, how class has shifted. Like when we look at people that would have been considered working class in the 80s and 90s, who are now homeowners and living quite comfortably, um, that's changed because obviously, you know, they had the opportunity to buy their house in the 80s or in the 90s. And now obviously younger generations come through, we're not able to, like we're much more insecure work. So I think there's actually a new class system emerging where younger people are in a sort of like lower class than those who, in generations above. And I think that's something we need to address. But I think as well, and I think this has been an issue that has not been grasped by sort of parties like the Lib Dems and the Greens, because I know a lot of people will say, well, especially with the Greens, is there's not this real class solidarity either that exists. Um, and as, as a party, I think we're really keen to obviously um, to bring, bring um, people from all backgrounds together. Um, and as well, with, as well with this, and I haven't really touched on this that much before, but like about like representation in politics as well. Like when you look at the makeup of Westminster, when you look at the 650 MPs that are there, back in like the 70s, maybe the 80s, there was like at least a, like a, a much, I say much broader, a bit more of a broader spectrum of people that were in parliament, you know, working class people, um, especially, like, especially when we talk about class. And now you look at it and it's like, there's just like no one that understands the issues of working class communities in, in parliament, like very few and far between. Um, and that's something like as a party that we're really keen to um, address and like, in, like when we're getting embedded in like our communities as we build out these regional branches later this year is like really engaging communities and getting more working class representation in politics. I think that's really important because it just doesn't, in, in my opinion, and I think party's opinion as well, is like it just doesn't exist at the moment. Okay. Uh, what's your position on Black Lives Matter? Yeah, Black Lives Matter. Like we, we fully support Black Lives Matter and what and what what they stand for. Like unapod, unapologetically so, I would say. Um, you know, a lot of our members were part of the protests last summer um, after the George Floyd killing. Um, and yeah, like we, we stand. You know, we 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 stand by side by side with organisations like BLM, um, like Extinction Rebellion, like Sisters Uncut. Like we're fully fully behind. Um, you know fully behind them. How do you feel about um, taking sculptures for swimming lessons? <laughs> it's, it's a hard one, isn't it? Because I understand, I understand there was like a lot said about that, but like the, the fundamental issue with the, the statue issue is that for years, people have been aware of the, the links that pe people that have been, um, people that have been sort of immortalized as statues have had like had links to colonialism and to the slave trade and there have been campaigns for years to get these figures removed and no one has listened and like yeah of course like you know the direct action that was taken with Edward Colston some people could say maybe that's a, you know some people have sort of gone oh that's a bit radical but it's frustration and it's it's been bubbling for a long time and no change comes about without this sort of action. I don't think we'd have, we wouldn't have been having this conversation if that didn't happen. Mm. Um, and I think like it's important that we start like as a party that we stand side by side with people who, who want to make this, the, these changes because it's totally, for, for, in my opinion, it's totally unacceptable that um, people like Edward Colston, you know, their statues were still standing proudly. Like imagine like you want to walk past that every day. Yeah. Um, you know, as a black man and a black woman, um, seeing that and going like, <laughs> it's just, it's just, it's to me, it's like you know, I can't, I can't understand why, why we allowed that. And there's a lot of people that say, oh, you're deleting, our, you know, you're deleting history and whatever else. But you know, put in, put, put Edward Colston statue in a museum, like yeah. make people aware, educate people about his links. Don't we don't need to have a statue celebrating him, you know? And I think that's that's what's really important. And I think. The statue argument has really been taken by the right wing, uh, like you know, the right wing, and by like media. When I say right wing, I mean media and the Tories, um, and it's been weaponized as well um, against the left. And it's just totally, it's totally ridiculous. Like, there's such bigger problems at like pl at play in terms of like talking about statues, but um, 
yeah, I, I think it's it's something that yeah we we we, we support what Black Lives Matter are doing. I see. Um, I noticed from your your Twitter you're in Manchester. Yes. How do you, how do you feel about Northern Independence? Yeah. So I think we have to be blunt here. Like North South divide exists. Like it does exist. Like it's there's proof that it exists. Um, you know, I'm, I'm a southerner living up north. I've been up here for nearly seven years. Um, where where I grew up down south, there was obviously there was you know I was in a working class community and it was like had deprivation. But I understand that the north gets a really raw deal. We saw that was sort of really emphasised when um, you know I think that was the moment when Northern Independence High really sparked into life. Especially it was the Andy Burnham King of the North asking for five million pounds more. Um, and then not, you know, and the government refusing it, um, you know, like, I think there's definitely, this is something that should have been raised a hell of a lot longer ago. Like this has been an issue for years and I'm glad that Northern Independence Party are raising that issue. Um, you know, Westminster definitely has too much power um, and we need to find a way to give um, regions like more control over their, their destiny really. Um, we, we don't I don't I don't think as a party we, we support Northern independence as such but we definitely believe in progressive federalism um, as a solution um, like we're, we're already in conversations with Northern independence party like we think they're you know they, they, they've made a really good mark and like it's great to see the pressure they've been putting on labor in Hartlepool um, like we I've spoken to Thelma Walker for the last uh, Thelma Walker for the last few months now and she's you know she's great like I think she would be a, you know a great MP for Hartlepool um, and we and we fully backed them in that election, and you know we're we're very very keen to work with them um, moving forward. But yeah, like I think for, for us, I think progressive federalism is the is the way to go. Okay. Um, we saw what happened with uh, Jeremy Corbyn's leadership and the kind of um, response to that from from the media and from from a large part of the Labour Party and from the kind of establishment in general. How do you think breakthrough could could fare better and learn lessons from that? Yeah, um, to be so blunt, I think we call bullshit on it. Um, the whole structure of like big newspapers and big media is dying. Um, the people we're trying to appeal to don't get their news from tabloid press. Like we're sort of running against this system. We are quite anti-establishment. Um, you know, they can say what they like. We're kind of aware that we're probably not going to win them over. So like we're willing, you know, we want to work with independent media and like be more willing to work with them. Like, I, I just don't, I just don't see us as, I understand that everything that we probably stand for is everything the establishment media will absolutely despise because it's actually changing things. So we're aware that like, there will be there will be inevitable attacks like you know we've already seen with Northern Independence Party like totally baseless attacks on Philip and um, other people within the party. Um, that that you know once part like smaller parties that start really making a bit of a name for themselves start you know people, there's going to be more um, smears thrown. Um, so like yeah we're we're going you know parties like Northern Independence Party parties like Breakthrough are totally running against this establishment so. We've just got to call bullshit on it when we see it and, you know, be willing to run against that system. Okay. Um, maybe touched on this a little bit earlier, but maybe give us a, a, a clearer picture. What structure does the organisation have? How are you, how are the decisions made? How's the leadership decided? How's, how's that kind of happened so far and how, what's the plan for the future? Yeah, so we have like a temporary steering group in place. Like when, when I first started the party, obviously it was just me. So like I was <laughs> making decisions here, there and everywhere and it wasn't sustainable. Like things got bottlenecked, obviously. Like it's just not sustainable. So we put a steering group together from people across the, across the party to sort of get involved and help make these decisions just to help get us moving, get us started. Um, but the plan is um, that we'll be like later this year we'll be holding we'll basically be, once we start getting um, more members through the door and we keep moving keep growing um, to have regional branches set up and then we'll have um, national committee elections um, later this year and um, we'll basically have a national committee that um, you know the leader the, we don't want to use like we don't really want to have a general secretary as it were but, and like the power that they hold as well it's not really productive so we're like quite big believers in distributing power and as i said before this idea of this sort of bottom-up approach rather than top down 
Um, but yeah, I think having a national committee that's elected by members um, helping lead is going to be really important for us. Um, and as I said before, having members really involved in policy decisions and in like candidate decisions, like we've seen off, the, like God, like we've seen the back of like, you know, the stuff that's been happening in Liverpool with Labour and Hartlepool, the long list of one, um, mm. you know, like we, we're really keen to avoid um, putting processes in place that allow this to happen. So we're very much like, we're quite lucky that we're a new party. We can kind of look at um, hierarchy, structures, whatever else that exist and kind of go, we don't need to do that. We can do things differently. Um, and we're, we're keen to do that. So, um, yeah, like, sorry, I don't feel like I gave much of it. It was quite vague there. But like, I think basically, like, in a nutshell, we want to be um, member driven and like we want them to be involved at the heart of every of the decision making process. And we want to build a structure around that. OK. Um, I'm, I'm a veteran of various things. I was I was involved in left unity in the early days and some of the obviously some of the other stuff. Um, what is it about you guys that makes you different in a very crowded left field of, of left wing organisations? We've seen all sorts of projects over the last kind of since, you know, in my day in the 80s and 90s onwards that have, have kind of fallen by the wayside. What, what, what are you guys, what sets you apart? I guess what, what sets us apart is an emphasis on young people and the issues that they're facing. Um, I think we saw with the Corbyn movement, it galvanised young people. Like it was a real opportunity like I think young people get a raw deal as I've already sort of spoken about in terms of um housing in terms of work in terms of debt like student debt I haven't even touched on that like the amount of student debt that they're in that you know people that were going to university 20 years ago weren't getting into um you know their issues the agenda you know the issues that they face the values they hold they're ignored completely in our political system um and that's got to change like ultimately they're the ones who are going to be dealing with these problems in the future um so like we're sort of confident enough that our agenda is going to resonate with those with people um and get and you know we're already seeing that traction on social media you know like that's already sort of building we've got a really group as i said before an amazing group of volunteers who are really enthusiastic and energized about what we're doing um you know and it's about fighting for younger people and giving them that representation in in mainstream politics and we hope we can be that vehicle for change Okay. Just reminded me I went to university about 20 years ago. Um, <laughs> I don't remember much of it. Um, one of the things that, and I've seen this on with Northern Independence Party and, and yourselves and, and anybody who tries to start a new project, um, and you see this all over Twitter and, and social media, is, is the response is you're just going to spit the boat and let the Tories in. What's, what's your, aren't you, aren't we just going to end up with more Tory MPs? Yeah, so the split the vote argument, I always find like quite funny. And I think like this has been re like this has been said before, but like there isn't a left vote to split at the moment. Like, there really isn't. Like when you look at the, the field of candidate, you know, the field of parties that are contesting elections frequently, like if, if we've got a, a right wing Labour MP who pretty much believes a lot of what the Tories does, what's you know, what, what benefit are they going to give us? They're not going to, you know, the fundamental issue is that a lot of these parties aren't going to address the fun, you know, address issues in, in, a, in a radical transformative way. They're just going to tinker with the status quo and quite happily just let things be as they are with just some slight changes. But like, we're very aware that there are some really pressing issues that need a lot more, a lot more radical solutions. And I think at the moment, like there is no, there is no left vote to split simply. Like we, we need to become that left vote whether that's Breakthrough, whether that's Northern Independence Party, whether that's Tusk or Resist or Harmony or whoever, we need to be that left vote. And I think, and I think we will be. Like, I, I'm, I'm, the, as days go on, like, when, when I started the party, like, well, when I started having the idea for the party last summer, I was really, like, really concerned with the political, um, I guess, like, the state of British politics. And as the months have gone on, as breakthroughs grow and as we've seen Northern Independence Party grow and other movements emerge, I'm feeling probably more confident than ever that like the, this is a real good, like this is like the start of something quite big for the left um, across the, across the night. I'm feeling a lot more hopeful for the future. I think there's people that are very, very angry and very frustrated, you know, very disillusioned with how things are, not only with the Tories and how shocking they've been <laughs> during this time of the pandemic, but 
also labor and like not not allowing them to get away with what they're doing anymore like it's not good enough they've not been good enough period um and we need we need an alternative and i think breakthrough can be that i think other parties could also be a part of that okay so um to, to kind of sum up then why, why do you think people should support breakthrough why should people support breakthrough um I would say if they want if they want a real viable alternative to the status quo, like the failed status quo, um, if you want a party that's actually going to represent the interests of people that have been forgotten, left behind, people, as I said before, young people, um, minority communities, really like vulnerable people that, um, that are struggling right now off the back of the pandemic, but just years of austerity, like we're going to be the voice for those people. Um, um, and that's what we stand for, really. Like, we're, we're, we stand up for these people and we will do, and we will give them a voice um, and we will offer the radical transformative change that, that we need to make a more fair, equal, and just society. That's what we will do. Brilliant. All right. Thanks, Alex. Thank you very much, Ed. No, it's been, it's been great chatting to you. Pleasure having you on. Thank you. No, very thanks much. so much, Ed. Take care. Cheers.